Hey everybody, I wanted to make a quick video showing how we can use the Fetch API in JavaScript to bring in an audio file that we can work with when using the Web Audio API. You see, once we've fetched our audio file, we can then process it as a node and do all sorts of cool manipulations to it, such as changing its playback speed or applying filters and reverb and so on. As usual with the Web Audio API, we want to create a new audio context first and assign it to a variable. And that's what we're doing here in the first line. I'm creating a new audio context and assigning it to const ctx for context. Now we have an audio context object, which we can call web audio API methods on. Next, we'll declare a variable audio, but we won't assign it just yet. Now on line four, here is where we call fetch, and we pass it the path of the audio file we want to use, which in this case is an MP3, which lives in the sounds folder of the directory I'm currently in. Since fetch returns a promise object, we can call then on it, and what we're doing here is taking data from the MP3 and putting it into a buffer. We use the array buffer method here in the body of the function. The thing is, we need to get the data into a buffer so that when we process it as an audio node, we can do so without latency. This will also let us apply all sorts of additional processing to it. But before we can actually work with the data as an audio node, we'll need to decode the data that's now in the buffer. And that's what we do here on line six, using the decode audio data method and passing in array buffer as its argument. Finally, on line eight, we assign audio, which we had initially declared in line two, to the decoded audio. So that's the basic process. We fetch the audio file, we get it into a buffer, and then we decode it in order to work with it as an audio node. As far as using this audio, I've declared a function called playback on line 11, which will help us do just this. In order to work with the decoded audio, we call create buffer source on the audio context. Here we're assigning it to const play sound. Now that play sound is a buffer source, we assign our audio variable as its buffer property. And then, just as if we're working with the Web Audio API's built-in waveforms, we need to connect play sound to audio context destination and start the sound itself. Finally, I'm simply adding an event listener to a mouse down event and passing in that playback function we declared as the callback. So let's try it out and see if we're successful. This is one of my own tracks, by the way, called Phantom Cities.